we still try to assimilate we still try to 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 fit in like crazy you know you don't fit in with black people because they don't like you for being gay you don't fit in with the straight people because you're obviously gay so you have to find a new group my name is jean paul paula i am 30 years old uh, i live in amsterdam and i'm a stylist It's really funny because I feel like this is the first time that anybody has ever asked me this question. Um, imagine being the descendant, direct descendant of colonialism. So it's not even slavery and then segregation, all of that, but just like colonialism happened. So you're, you're from a place where slaves were traded. Um, they lived there straight from Africa or whatever. Um, you've been part of this 300 year, 350 year history of slavery and you descend from that. So your culture and your history is almost non-existent. Um, and then you move to a country which was not even partially, but which was in a very grand way responsible for slavery as it is. So it's, it's very um, surreal to wake up every day in a beautiful city like Amsterdam and look around and be very aware of why this country is uh, so rich. I don't think that people know what it is like because I think in Europe racism is very different from what it's like in America. People won't come up to you and try and, at least not in Holland, they will not necessarily come and try and kill you for it. But you are less of a human being. You're like less than white. You're like a class lower. Um, and it's something which is constant and people won't necessarily say it to your face, but you'll hear it. You know, you'll hear a whisper or you'll hear a comment here or there. So it's um, it's something which happens quite consistently. And you can't turn it off. People sometimes expect that because you live in this country or because you're living around white people that you at one point, not that you become it, but you get accepted for being who you are. But hearing things like, I don't like black people, but I like you because you're different, isn't normal to hear. And we don't have to accept stuff like that. But once again, coming from colonialism and also living with relatives and with family that tell you not to complain because it's better than it's ever been before, these things are very confronting. Because you know something's wrong, but you don't feel like you can say anything because you feel like it's better than it's ever been. Or if you say something, people will understand it the wrong way and they will get angry. Which by now doing so, because I do speak my mind now, people do get angry uh, for no reason. Um, I tell them that I don't like to be treated a certain way and they tell you... I mean, with a lot of words, don't whine and shut up. And if you do want to whine, you can go back to where you came from. I am where I came from. I kind of experienced a bit through my parents. I have to say, like, they would come home and be like, they did this or that at work. Um, I myself have to be honest and say that for the longest period, I thought it didn't exist. I think it's really normal in this country to think that racism, at least growing up in the 90s, that it doesn't exist. Like, you'd watch TV and there were so many black people on TV doing things that were normal, like black doctors, uh, black pilots, um, black superheroes. Black people were everywhere to me. I thought they was, we were part of the world more than anything. I felt very empowered. I felt like part, uh, like I had the right to exist. I had the right to be here. Um, this changed, obviously, when I, as I got older. High school, yeah. I turned 12, I went to high school, and then it started to like shift a bit. You'd start hearing things, people would say things, people would say things to other people that I know, because I'm considered light-skinned here, you know? I'm black, but I'm light-skinned. Um, I don't consider myself light-skinned. This is, I get really dark in summer for my feel, and this is, like, this is winter color. But, um, I mean, white people call me black, let's be honest, but it's black people who, who um, like once again, colonialism, there's a lot of segregation within the black community itself as well. Um, um, we separate each other from each other literally based on skin tone uh, and on, sometimes even on facial features. Like, yeah, like you look a bit more Asian or you look a little bit more European, so therefore, you know, you're linked to those things and you're not as black as... And it's not even a bad thing. They see it as something pretty. They're like, oh, you're so beautiful because... Uh, and I just always thought that it was weird. I mean, my mom is quite light-skinned. My dad is the same color as me. 
when I say quite light skinned, I mean she's a black lady with freckles and what they call good hair. So she has soft hair, um, but not straight hair. It's just soft. Um, her her mother was black, like dark black, and her dad was like super light skinned, like Rihanna light skinned, um, or lighter skinned even. So you have to understand that I come from a place where this is the norm. Like we have a big mix of a lot of different black people, and within that. There's like, you know, good hair, good skin, all of these things as well. I feel like in Curaçao, where I'm from, we don't have so much racism there towards each other. But once you move to Holland and you meet other black people, it becomes a different, uh, a different thing. When I first came out of the closet to my dad, my dad said, my son, you're going to have such a hard life. You are both black and gay. You know, it's like having two big things that are uh, pillars that I have to walk up against uh, in my life uh, but I, I kind of never saw it as an obstacle or something bad I mean the moment that I kind of accepted it which took me a while the moment that I accepted it I accepted it fully and completely um, there are things that happen in gay in the gay culture of course and obviously but once again there are stereotypes there and black men are being seen as sexual objects so for me in that sense I mean it's negative when it's negative but it's positive or I wouldn't even say extremely positive people do think a certain thing and it gives me options in a way but I've had I've had a good few discussions with people because they want to have sex with you but they're still racist you know what I mean I posted a picture of me uh, it's a nude picture from the back uh, I'm just standing there, so I'm not doing any like weird positions or anything, but somebody wrote a little story because they write a lot of like fan fiction with the stories that or with pictures that are being posted. And somebody wrote a story about a Belgian settler going to Senegal and he took back a black boy that he had saved because he wasn't, you know, safe in Senegal. I mean, I read this and I think I'm from Curaçao, you know, like I'm 30 years old. I don't even know what I meant to save my ass. I'm really all right, you know. I work hard for what I do. I make, I'm all right with my money and everything. So I read this and I'm just like, this is the shit that people think about people like me. Mm. But being black and gay, I think in Europe it's not that bad. I think in Europe we have a lot of, uh, because it, it kind of disassociates us with the majority of black people and a lot of the negative connotations that come with being black and it puts us in a different thing like you don't hear that much negative things about black gay people if you know what i mean and this sounds horrible to say but i think that a lot of people do try and um how do you say that we still try to assimilate we still try to 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 fit in like crazy you know you don't fit in with black people because they don't like you for being gay you don't fit in with the straight people because you're obviously gay so you have to find a new group so within the gay culture you're trying to be as attractive as possible and how do you do that you try and be either as white as possible uh and it's a lot of different versions or ways of doing this and one of the ways mostly to doing it is trying not to act don't act too black don't scare people i think that black men when like i mean there are obvious stereotypes that white people have for black people and they ask you this point blank like do you have a big dick um is it true what they say i think women also get the sexual thing quite a lot but i think that black women um being a woman already makes it completely different for them imagine being a black woman and the way that black men in general treat black women imagine being an a mother on your own and you're black with your kids society just brands you as fail you failed you might be able to work in a grocery shop or at the mcdonald's if your dutch is good enough or if you went and got like the lowest degree possible but that's as much as we're going to ask of you don't expect more from life this is it there are so things that other people think of us like white people or every other culture thinks of black people here and then there's how black people treat themselves <clears throat> I don't think that we treat each other very nicely or well. I don't think that we have camaraderie. I don't think that we help each other. I don't think black women help each other. Um, I think black women think it's a competition when another black woman enters the room. I know that black people do that with me. 
um, when I first moved to Amsterdam, uh, 2004 or five. I was 19, I'm 30 now, so you do the calculation, you do the math. Um, when I first moved here, I remember very distinctly that being the only black person in my group, and I said this to my friends, like, I'm very aware of this. You might not be, but I am. So you have to imagine that for years you just hang around <clears throat> with no one to really talk to this to about. So it's something that you feel, and you feel things people say, so you, you do get feisty. But, I mean, I got feisty about it, and I spoke up about it. Um... But it's something that <clears throat> that you you kind of choose to live with and you kind of accept. You kind of accept that it's it's like that. But once you meet other black people, it's very often that they look at you like, look, these are my people. This is my group. Don't taint them or don't try to steal them from me. And I always found this hilarious. I always thought that this was the weirdest thing. Because the whole camaraderie, the whole thing of, hey, brother, leaves the building. It doesn't even exist. Also because we're not related, so I don't want you to say, hey, brother, to me at all. Like, there's no reason for you to do that. Um, and I think that that's kind of the culture that we live in here as well. Um, it's very kind of individual luck and individual um, success. It's about me. We don't have to do this together because I can do it on my own. I think that after being told that we're not good enough, really repeatedly, like our parents tell us that we have to do better. We have to work twice as hard. We have to be twice as patient. We have to turn the other cheek. My parents told me all these things. Like, don't complain. Um, it does make you hard. And it also makes you weary. You know, maybe these people are here to take from me what I have done. Um, they could be white people, but they could also be black people. It could always happen. Um, and I also think that within our own families, a lot of shit goes down. Like you see the way your aunts and uncles treat your parents and vice versa. And it does create a certain, um, in our own minds, a certain type of also stereotype. And uh, uh, and we were reserved. Like we want to be careful with what we have, with the freedom that we have, with the, the friends that we choose. Do we want to, I don't know, I think sometimes people are even like, do you want to talk about this every day? Like, do you want to talk about the complications of being black every day? Or do you just want to live? And this, this is not even, I don't even think this is a real question people ask themselves. They're just thinking like, if I hang out with, 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 with Jack or with Jan or with um, Lotte, these are Dutch people's names, uh, apart from Rashid or uh, Anulka or whatever, like how different will your life be? Like, is it easier to hang out with them or is it, easier to hang out with them and I think these are also choices people make at certain points depending where you come from as well do you live in a big city or do you live in a village because you know in the village it gets real you know you're literally the minority so people will come up to you and ask you a million stupid questions maybe on a daily can you survive that it's not normal for people to act like that but they do that here it really for me it does connect to history a lot we have been told repeatedly for for decades to act a certain way, to be a certain way, to assimilate. Uh, and media doesn't help. <laughs> if anything, it makes it much, much, much worse. Uh, Dutch media doesn't show diversity at all. They show stereotypes in the worst forms and ways. There's a lot of black people who feed these machines as well. Um, there's a lot of horrible comedians here that really feed this machine. Uh, and it goes back into our stereotypes like, oh, you're black and you're a clown, so we're allowed to laugh at you. We're allowed to say things to you that we might normally not say because it's not respectful, but we can because it's funny. No, you can't and it's not funny. And people need to speak up about this. People need to have a firm opinion because once you start speaking, people will expect for you to explain. And if you can't give a good explanation, they will not take you seriously. They will tell you that you're acting out for no reason and you can't. Um, give us a good enough reason for us to not do this. Why can't we use the N-word? You can. No, you can't use the N-word. <laughs> and neither can we. I worked for a magazine at one point, um, and my boss at this magazine uh, ended up having a fight with his assistant, uh, a black, bigger lady, and he told her, you big black fuck, like, stop fucking eating and quite loud and for everyone on our floor to hear uh, and this apparently was normal and it's just happened 
uh, this was in Paris. In Belgium, I did a job once and I got there and the Wi-Fi password was 10 little niggers. There are a lot of racist people in fashion and they say a lot of racist things. But it's because the world is very racist towards everyone that is not white. Asian, Indian, Arab, it doesn't matter. You're not white. We already have one of you. We don't need another. Oh, we ask for no black girls. People say this. People say this and they say it in a... Uh, a very monotone voice and cruel because they mean it when they say it. Uh, they don't have to think about it because of white privilege. They don't have to feel like they're offending anyone because they feel like they're doing their job. Me, in fashion, when I first started, I people saw me as a fashion clown. Uh, at least that's how I see it because I dressed the part. And it's not that I dressed like a clown, but it was more that I was so expressive in the way that I dressed that that is where, where they put me. Also, I'm not from Africa and I'm not from America. I'm from the Caribbean, so therefore you are exotic, which is another word for saying, um, it's like you're telling Asian people that they're Oriental. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not a, I'm not a delicacy. I'm not food. I'm not anything stupid like that. I'm a person and I'm black and that's it. Um, so all of these stereotypes do come to play a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of people, black people in, in fashion internationally I can say this like this is not something that is very common it is coming up more and more now because there's a huge middle class obviously which likes luxury and these people work in fashion uh, but it's a lot of like little things that then build up into bigger things like I can't um, uh, explain to how many fashion shows that I've been where every girl was white and you don't start noticing it until you start noticing it and then it becomes something that you can't unsee I think she's gonna hit the fan. I think that a race wars are gonna happen. I think everything's gonna happen in the next, like, I don't know, 10 years. I mean, Donald Trump became president, so it could be even faster than that. Um, but when Donald Trump won, the KKK also won. And the amount of things that I'm reading online already on just the little things that are happening here and there, you know? Houses that are being lit on fire. People that are committing suicide because they're being bullied to death for being black. It's, um, or being mixed even. Bear with me here, like, it's really going south. People have a right to be angry. We don't have a choice anymore. It's either we get educated now and move forward, or we will stay behind and perish. I think it's either we're going forward or not. There are a lot of people who died for you and me to be able to vote and be free today. A lot of this happened in America because the whole world looks there. It is the media center of the world. It's a horrible country, a third world country, if you, if you ask my opinion. But it is what it is. And if we're going to continue being this way, it's also up to us that in our own environment, in our own society, in our own, um, in our own house even, to start our own version of change for the better. And it hurts me to say, but we have to do this together with white people. We don't have the choice anymore. They also don't have the choice because we're not going anywhere. And I'm really not trying to be mean here or rude, but if you're choosing to just do nothing, you're part of the problem. I'm not calling you racist, but I'm saying don't talk because you're not helping.